If you're someone who hasn't quite been able to get their head around BMW's styling and design over the last few years, you might want to look away now. For the rest of us, this is the BMW iX2. We're familiar with the iX1. This is like a sportback version of the car. It still delivers over 300 brake horsepower. It's fully electric. And like a lot of modern BMWs, the looks are divisive. Oh, and my head hurts. Not because he went too hard at the bar last night, because getting in to this car and out of it with the lower roof line, the inside of the cloth and the headlining can catch you on the side of the head. And that's bloody sore. There are bits of this car that feel like they just kind of stuck bits onto it. I'm not least talking about this almost threaded eyebrow looking boot spoiler. And if you've ever seen a woman with freshly threaded eyebrows, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The BMW badge is the operation for the boot. It's electric. And there's actually quite a bit of space back here for you and the family. Although there's a bit of a shelf for storing things below, which means you're losing a bit of depth this way. And a car that is essentially a family car that's an electric SUV you should probably have a flexible boot cover as well just to give you more space I like the way it opens this way and nice and high and you can not knock your head off at least this part of the car it really is sore portamao blue is the color though which you can't go wrong color wise in a beamer i do quite like this front end nose of the car although sometimes I look at i think ford puma BMW won't like that. The wheels are nice. They're quite like uh, the ones I had on the 520i video. A little bit small, don't really fill the arches. And you think, well, smaller wheels, more comfort. You'd be wrong. Some facts and figures then when it comes to the battery. 64.7 usable is the battery size. It has 11 AC kilowatt on board as standard. There's no vehicle to low, there's no vehicle to grid. It will do 128 kilowatt charging on DC. It's good for a range of BMW, WLTP claim of over 500 kilometers. I think real world, you're probably somewhere between 350 and 450, maybe five in the summertime. Inside is quite similar to the iX1, the same curved and angular grab handles, same dashboard, in a weird way actually. BMW are now giving you a lot of the interior features that you get in much more expensive cars. This wheel is out of a 133,000 euro i5 M60 or an i7. The screen, as complicated as it is, there's lots of apps and widgets and now on board gaming for when you're charging. This screen is a little bit smaller, but it essentially works the same way. Driver instruments, exactly the same as the more expensive cars. Same as the head-up display. Let's, the seats maybe don't feel as nice, but actually, you know, there's a lot of things in this car that are from very expensive BMWs. There's a floating armrest with extra storage down below. You clamp your phone in to charge it with a little clamp holder there. There's drinks holders. Good space in the back. A lot of space for your feet and your knees. Just watch out for that sloping roof line. I can still feel it 20 minutes later on the side of my head. And you can adjust the rear seats individually for different angles if you want a bit more space in the boot. And that's a good thing because the iX1, I struggled to fit a couple of kids' bikes with the dog in the back and it just was kind of problematic. Anyway, let's go for a spin and I'll explain the characteristics, the quirks of this car. First thing you'll notice is that the steering is very, very light in the car and there's a sport mode that you can probably firm it up a little bit, but it's quite light considering you're driving something with 306 brake horsepower so you you're quickly changing direction and if the steering is too light you, you kind of just tend to over input movements into the steering wheel you get used to it but it's yeah it is over two tons so you get that bounce when you go over surfaces that are quite the smoothest the brakes are good 
there's a regen option by pressing B on the gear shifter you get that hand zimmer noise that you can turn off if you don't want Mr. Zimmer in your ears all day long little tip for you if you're driving a new BMW and the driver speed warning drives you mad hold down the set button and speed limit warning is deactivated until the next journey then you'll have to do it again yeah it's quite it's quite a hard setup and it's a little bit unpredictable and if you're on a smaller road you're really being chucked around from from left to right and that is not at bonker speed or anything it's just you know normal roads it's quite it's like being on a bouncy castle at times doing about 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour so that's just over 60 kilowatt hour battery multiplied by that by 2.7 gives you an idea of your real world range it's cold it's not particularly cold it's eight degrees right now so it does move i mean 300 brake horsepower that's always going to be the case um it does manage to kind of disguise its weight in the in a handling sense but as i said when you're going over a series of bumps and imperfections in the road it can be like this and it, it it's not particularly comfortable so when you're on a good road then it drives like a bmw and things are starting to feel familiar again if you're over a, a series of just things where there's curvatures in the side of the road and stuff and one wheel is one part of the axle is tipped up compared to the other side of the car it's like god this feels weird if your journey is generally on decent roads m sport the hoop off yourself if you're gonna prioritize comfort then you might want to just step your trim down a bit it's got good grip and it corners well so it definitely feels like a bmw in some moments other times you're not quite sure Ugh. getting chucked around again and the driving dynamics of classic bmws has kind of been lost for the suv -ness of there's a word the suv -ness of this thing um so if you want a bmw that subjectively looks good uh, is well kitted nice interior and spaciously has things and you don't mind kind of things that look like they've been stuck onto it if you do want to go electric though and you want to still capture the driving dynamics of a bmw this is not the car for you you need to look at the i5 it's just much more composed a well-rounded balanced car uh, this is more if you want an suv here you go but you're not necessarily going to enjoy every single road that you use it on if you get me what do you think looks wise threaded eyebrows uh, are you interested in the new bmw ix2 leave the comments down below and thank you very much for watching